So obviously off and running here uh, Wednesday, getting after uh, practice here again. We're excited to get back out there and try to get better here today. So uh, we've got a big challenge in front of us. Um, you know, Philadelphia is an outstanding team. They've got a lot of great players. Um, I think, um, you know, Coach Peterson does a great job with that team. I think he prepares them hard uh, to be ready to go every single week. And, and uh, you know, they're very competitive. It's a 60-minute game with these guys. So we've got, um, we got a lot of work in front of us. There's a lot of great players there that we're learning and trying to get a – a good, um, you know, good jump on here as we practice and prepare through the week, and, and today will be a big day for us to improve, um, not only ourselves, but then you know to get ready for uh, for our opponent. So, um, you know, just excited to get ready going. So, what do we got? Sir, you know, you said that uh, you're, you're planning as if their their full roster is playing, but they they canceled practice because of injuries today. How much do you have to prep for? I guess some of the next guys on the depth chart and make sure you're learning their their tendencies as well for your guys. Um, I think, you know, we usually generally run into situations where guys are injured or dinged up, uh, you know, early in the week, and we see how it goes towards the end of the week. Um, you know, the um, NFL football games are pretty, you know, pretty violent games, and, and guys come out, um, you know, beat up, and, and it goes from there. So uh, we just prepare like normal. You know, we just got to push forward, and we're always kind of on top of um, all the different players and all the different pieces as far as that's concerned, and we study hard on all those guys. Um, not really uncommon for, um, you know, coaches to um, – um, I know it's called canceled practice, but they're still walking through. They're still preparing. They're still getting ready to go. So, you know, we did the same thing last year for Carolina, you know, walked through on Wednesday and then practiced Thursday and Friday and went out and played. So not a really an uncommon thing and um, something that I know, um, knowing Coach Peterson and, and the job that he does to get his team ready to go and ready to play and prepare, um, you know, they're working today. So they're, they're in a full work day, and, and so are we. And, um, you know, we're just all trying to do the same thing, get better, and, and you know, hopefully uh, give us a chance to go win on Sunday. So we'll just prepare like normal and, and you know, just keep studying and everybody that we have to and uh, look at all the different uh, pieces as we go forward. You had a pretty epic Super Bowl battle a couple years back. I know we on this side and maybe fans sometimes like to talk about rivalries or, you know, is there any, I don't know, payback? I, I don't know, do coaches look at it that way or how do you sort of look back on that? that Super Bowl? Um, I mean, I personally try to not look back at that Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> Quite a bit. So, uh, I mean, Doug's a, he's a great coach. He does a great job. I, I actually, you know, I know a lot of the guys on that staff, you know, um, guys that I've either coached with before or been around before. And, um, you know, just I know how well they are coached and how hard they work. So um, for us, it's all about this year. Um, you know, just like I'm sure it is for him, it's all about this year and the team that uh, he has and the team that we have and trying to prepare, you know, our teams to go play well, um, you know, week three in September. So it's always a little bit different from that standpoint. You guys can come sit down. Well, um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it's just uh, I have a lot of respect for him and what he's done there, you know, and, and like I said, the coaches that are there, and um, those are guys that I know really well and I know how hard they work. So I just know that it's, you know, it's going to be a big challenge from that standpoint. Totally, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, great amount of respect for, for him. You and uh, Bob both spoken a lot about being, you know, multiple and being able to adjust game to game. This is the third week in a row you're facing uh, a pretty unique defense with, uh, you know, an established coordinator calling the shots there. Does it give you a better idea of where you're at, you know, getting to that goal? Um, I mean, I think it's, you know, it is different. Obviously, you know, Jim Schwartz is a great, you know, he's a great coach. He's a great play caller. He does a great job of leading that unit. And, um, you know, I know him really well, too, you know, just kind of going back through our ties of, of uh, you know, coaching trees and things like that. So um, I know how hard he's going to prepare those guys, and I don't know how hard they're going to work to get ready to go. Um, and that'll be a big challenge for us on that side of the ball. And, um, you know, it is something for us that as we build through the course of the season, um, you know, we're continually trying to take each week as its own week and, and build upon those things, even though, um, you know, in, in the NFL, there's tendencies for things to repeat from one week to the next. Maybe it's something that um, we had difficult with or something that was a, a good play for an opponent. We know that we have to prepare for somebody else to run that against us, um, whether it's the immediately next week or maybe two weeks out. So we continually have to learn from what we've done, you know, the previous two weeks. And But we have to get ready for the Eagles and, and the different things that they do. That'll be our biggest, you know, um, biggest challenge here this week, especially with their defense. I mean, they have so many great players, um, you know, obviously up front. Um, you know, Fletcher Cox is one of the – he's one of the best defensive tackles in the league. This guy's big, he's strong, he's explosive. I mean, he's a major problem. Um, Brandon Graham's another guy on the edge. You know, I remember him coming out and just his explosiveness, his ability to kind of um, win the line of scrimmage, penetrate across, and uh, be very disruptive in, in the backfield. And, um, you know, um, Malcolm Jenkins, another guy I have a tremendous amount of respect for, and just, you know, his – longevity through the league and everything that he's done and he's just an extremely smart player and you watch him on tape he makes a lot of communication makes a lot of adjustments in those in those defensive calls um, some of those schemes are pretty complex and 
um, they disguise really well. And then, uh, you know, people have to be in the right places and he's doing a lot of that in the back end. So just, um, you know, it's just a really difficult, um, difficult team to prepare for. A change of running back yesterday. Just two two parts of that. Um, one, what what do you like in, in Paul Perkins? And uh, two, you don't really have that that big back on your, your roster anymore. Is there um, anything you're I guess missing in not having the, the bowling ball that you can throw down the middle? Yeah, um, it's tough. It's bowling ball. I don't know if it's. Um, I think from the running back standpoint, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. Obviously, um, you know, we have a tremendous amount of um, you know. Um, of trust and carry on and what we what we know uh, that he can do from a running back position. Um, Ty Johnson, I think, is another guy that uh, you know uh, ran really hard last week. Uh, J.D. McKissick is another guy that we kind of brought on, and and obviously, um, you know, we're just trying to push forward with everybody that we think that we can get out there. And um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for C.J. Um, and everything that he's done in this league and how hard he's working. Everything he did while he was here, um, you know, sometimes just in the, in the course of the roster, sometimes movement happens. Uh, we're going to do what's best for the team as far as that's concerned. And he, uh, C.J. was great, you know, as far as every day coming in and just being the same guy and working really hard. But um, as far as a big back is concerned, I think for us it's just, um, you know, I've seen small guys run hard. I've seen big guys run um, not so hard. So it's, it's really just about the individual and those particular situations and the blocking up in front of it and what we need to get. And so for us, it's more just about the production, I think, more so than, than the overall size, if that makes any sense uh, from that aspect of it. What is it about Paul that, that Paul? He, he'd like? Sorry, I forgot. Oh, um, you know, just watching him on tape, and he's actually someone that um, – you know, kind of has been on the radar for a while. Got injured last year, um, came on a couple of years ago. And um, looking through the preseason, uh, he runs hard. He runs very explosive downhill. But he can he has kind of a skill set that can do a couple of different things. You know, he has enough speed to kind of get to the edge if he needs to. He can get down inside if he needs to. He's tough. He'll uh, pass pro. He'll kind of put his body in there. And, um, you know, he's not afraid of contact from that standpoint. So, um, you know, just thought it was a good opportunity to, to help us. And, and really not only on offense, but also special teams. He has some value there, too, which is important for us of our overall kind of, um, you know, makeup of our team. This is maybe a bit more general, but do you think NFL rosters are built for facing 10 personnel on offense? Good question. Um, you know, I think uh, if you it, – obviously each team is different, you know, and it just depends on who you're playing and all that stuff. Um, but I would say the four wide receiver sets – um, depending on a lot of 11 personnel, let's call it, you know, three wide receivers, one tight end sets can play a lot like 10 personnel or four open, you know, kind of that opened up spread formation um, offense. So I think a lot of defenses nowadays are used to kind of that opened up offensive sets and whether it's a um, pass catching tight end or a fourth wide receiver in those situations, I think um, a lot of times you're um, seeing a lot of that, more of that on tape. So you kind of evaluate it, figure out how you're going to defend it, stop it, all those sort of things. So I think it's more common nowadays than um, maybe what it was before. Uh, I'm not saying that everybody's got all the answers against it, but um, certainly from that standpoint, we, we see a lot more of those looks. Was that part of why obviously, I know a lot of teams see playing more base nickel than than, the, than like, you know, five, ten years ago. Yeah. I think is that part of the reason why they use the, I'd rather be an 11 or a 10? I think, um, you know, a lot of that goes back, I think it was probably – um, 2011 or so, I think, is when you really started, um, when I started taking a look at that, and I was kind of taking a look at the installations and how we were um, putting our defenses in. And um, it was one of those things where you come out as your self-scout after the year and you're playing 87% nickel or 87% sub defense, and you're kind of having to completely rethink everything as far as how you uh, install and how you teach um, and making sure that you put enough time into those different packages to handle you know, 87% of the snaps that you're going to see that season. So a lot of it, I think, had to do with the uh, transformation of some of the tight ends at the time. If you take it in the late 2000s to really 2010 and those pass-catching type tight ends that were coming into the league and some of the guys that were in the league that were having success, Dallas Clark, some of those type of players. Um, and then they were taking those guys that were traditionally lined up in line and putting them out into space. So defenses had to change and they had to adapt. And when more of those guys kind of were coming out of college and um, teams found a lot of success with those guys in um, you know, in the NFL, um, I think from there it was a natural progression go from like 12 to 11 and put the three wide receivers out there. I think um, certainly guys like Wes Welker at the time caught on and, and their protection of that uh, slot position became, you know, very valuable not only on third down, but I think a lot of teams were getting a lot of value of it um, on the early down situations. And it just, uh, I would say from a skill position, that's where everything kind of trended from there and started and went forward. More questions? You, uh, you mentioned a few other guys on defense. Uh, Sidney Jones seemed like he had a pretty good game last week. Just wondering what your impressions are of him. Um, I think uh, you know those guys definitely. 
um, outside of just their their playing aggressive because you know some of the game was some pretty good blitz calls and things like that where those guys were um, very aggressive in the front, you know, and I think they knew the ball was going to come out quick, and I think that they were able to kind of um, play more aggressive in those situations. Uh, if you watch, you know, a couple of the different games and different calls where it's maybe more of a coverage game or some of those situations, I think those guys are just continually learning and getting better. You know, they've had a couple moving parts back there, and I think those guys are just um, trying to understand the techniques that they're teaching. You know, Corey Ellen, who actually coaches the secondary, is a good friend of mine. Um, and, um, you know, I know he's got those guys working really hard, but I thought it was good from last week for them was the kind of marriage of Russian coverage and the pressure and everything that they were getting out of that all kind of uh, seemed towards the end of the game like it was working pretty well. Uh, yeah, I got a little bit what, when a guy, and this may be more of a college thing, I don't know, but when a guy's going to like when he's going back to Philly or D.C. or wherever to play, do you worry about that at all, whether it's distractions or whether it's, tickets or anything like that or um, at this point does it not matter because they're 30 years old and yeah, I mean, I think it just it would depend on the individual. I mean, I'm never worried about anything like that. I mean, I think for the most part, everyone's, um, you know, going out with the right idea to try to go um, play really well and help the team win. So it's never really any of that. I mean, you might have situations where a guy might have um, unusual requests of numbers or whatever it is, and you try to get in front of it and help help it ahead of time. But um, we have great resource, resources in the building that help, you know, our, our guys and prepare so that a lot of that's taken off their plate so they can just concentrate on going and playing because that's really, you know, the bottom line for us is just we got to go play well. So we try to alleviate as much of that as we can. Okay. Thank you. Right, appreciate it.